Hello everyone, thanks for coming. Uh, as Crystal mentioned, my name is Peter Brownell. I am the Research Director at the Center on Policy Ishi Initiatives. Um, and we're here today releasing new research in this brief, uh, convenient and accessible trifold brochure, which highlights the difficulties families, including working families, have in meeting the region's high cost of living. Um, in the, in the report, we find that 38% of households, well over one-third, have difficulty in meeting the region's most basic costs of living. Um, even among households headed by someone who works full-time year-round, nearly one-quarter don't meet, don't earn enough to meet their family's basic needs. Um, and the problem simply is that too many of the region's jobs don't pay enough to make ends meet. Our regional economy produces high-wage jobs in sectors like biotech and communications, but also an overabundance of low-wage jobs um, in service industries like restaurants and hotels. Um, these two sectors make up the majority of the 150,000 jobs in the tourism sector, and we find that over half, 52% of workers in the, in the tourism industry are unable to meet their families' basic economic needs. Um, additionally, our findings indicate that the majority of families falling below uh, are unable to make ends meet, don't fall below the federal poverty line, and, and thus are not counted in official poverty statistics. Um, instead of using the federal poverty threshold, which is a one-size-fits-all measure used in all regions across the country regardless of the cost of living, um, what we use are updated budgets calculated specifically for San Diego County by the Insight Center for Community Economic Development. These budgets are based on the real cost families experience here in the San Diego economy, trying to meet their basic needs uh, without help from public assistance or, or help from family or friends. For that reason, the budgets are called the self-sufficiency standard and are calculated for 156 different family types based on the number of adults and the number and age of children in the family. These are basic budgets that include the full market cost of, of all basic needs, but not assuming, for example, uh, that households are able to rely on free child care from a, from a grandparent or someone else outside the, the, the nuclear family. Um, they, just to give a couple of examples, the annual budget for a single adult with no children is $27,565, which works out to $13.09, assuming that someone is working year-round, full-time. Um, you know, of course, that's for a single adult, for a family with children, as you would expect, expenses are much higher. Um, so, for one example, um, for two adults with an infant, $67,275 annually, which uh, works out to about fifteen ninety-three, well, exactly $15.93 uh, for both adults working full-time year-round. I'm not gonna go through the other 154 budgets, um, but they're available on our website, onlinecpi.org. What this data clearly shows is that many families are not earning enough and struggle every day in trying to meet their basic needs. The report uh, profiles three such families, and we're going we're gonna to hear from some other families, other San Diegans that are, that are facing that same struggle today. But before we hear from them, we're going to hear from our partners, Shana Gross from the United Way of San Diego, and Anahid Brocky from Leech Tech Foundation. Good morning, thank you all for being here. Too often we think of success as being above poverty level, when the reality is that we need to be talking about being above self-sufficiency, and those are two very different things. The United Way is proud to have partnered with the Leech Tag Foundation to support the research and the report that we're releasing today that talks about what our community really needs. At United Way, we're focused on the, what we consider to be the building blocks of a good life, education, financial stability, and health, and how interconnected all of those things are. When our families struggle to meet basic needs, we know it impacts not just the adults, but also the children in those families. If your parents are working two or three jobs just to pay rent and put food on the table, who's attending parent-teacher conferences? Who's helping their kids with their homework each night? 
If you don't have reliable transportation, you can't afford to fix that car. How are you taking your kids to a doctor's appointment and making sure that they're getting eyeglasses so that they can read the chalkboard in school? United Way's goal is that all of our San Diego families have the ability to make ends meet and save for a future. And to us, that future includes great opportunity. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Ana Hiparaki. I'm the program director. I'm the program director for the Leech Tag Foundation for Self Sufficiency. Since the recession of 2008, the Leech Tag Foundation has invested over $10 million in San Diego County programs that advance the self sufficiency of local residents. A common perception when talking about addressing poverty, addressing self sufficiency issues, is that people just need to get motivated and find a job. The reality is that there are excellent programs countywide that are helping to place people into jobs every day. The problem is that these jobs don't pay the bills. A single mother earning $12 an hour doesn't qualify for public assistance for childcare, healthcare, or food. Yet, as the report shows, she doesn't earn nearly enough to co cover those costs on her own. The Leech Tech Foundation and United Way funded this study to measure how many households fall into this category. And we see that it's a shockingly high number. 38% of working age households fall below the self-sufficiency level. Our real hope is that this study draws attention to the fact that addressing poverty Addressing economic distress and hardship in San Diego County is not just about finding people jobs. If we don't look at the issue of a livable wage, then we're never going to advance in the battle against the war, the war against poverty. Thank you. Next up is Sandra Galindo of La Mesa. Good morning, my name is Sandra Galindo. I'm a divorced mother of three daughters. I work two jobs. I work as a caregiver, but I also work as a housekeeper. Uh, my wages range between nine and twelve dollars, but it's not enough to pay all the debt we have accumulated of years earning low wages, salaries. Um, because I work all day, my daughters are being educated over the telephone, you know, and they are educated by the TV. And it's sad because I work so hard all day. I even go to school. I'm pursuing a journalism career. And it, it saddens me that I still depend on welfare. So it saddens me that it's, it, it's terrible that I still depend on welfare. And, and it's terrible because I have to depend on my EBT card and it's embarrassing every time I'm paying, you know, and I work hard. I work two jobs uh, because I only earn low wages. I only pay rent and the rest I have to depend on loans from friends, pawn shops, from families, from credit cards, from the terrible Walmart, you know, that gives me credit and, and I have to depend on those <laughs> When they ask me if I want cash back, I always say yes. You know, I always need it. I always need to put gas or go buy better meals for my kids. So um, I'm here because we live in the finest city for some, but it's not fair to earn these miserable wages for many of us. We 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 want to be able to have. To have only one job and being able to to do the role as a mother to educate our children to not seeing they are getting obese because are they they're all day long all day by themselves you know in front of a tv eating just junk that that's what we can afford with with our benefits so um i think we need in san diego better wages thank you next up is josh jones of lemon grove Josh Jones. Uh, I've worked with uh, three different transportation companies uh, in the past year and a half. Sorry. 
Uh, I've worked with three different transportation companies within the past year and a half. And uh, not only is it uh, a common practice for transportation companies not to uh, pay your hourly and overtime wages, they take uh, at least 12 hours of your time a day. And, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's unfortunate that you have a lot of people who have kids and they don't get all the time to be able to spend with, at home. Uh, but they're they're not making enough to uh, you know to, to to pay rent. And uh, me personally, I didn't get a chance to you know pay rent. Uh, living off of commissions was not enough. And um, I didn't also didn't have enough time to go to school. So uh, you know for a while uh, I was living back at parents' house. You know uh, aunts, grandmothers. You know. Uh, and uh, currently, I don't work for the transportation company anymore. So uh, going back to school full time. So it's, it's, it's unfortunate that uh, you know a lot of people don't get the, the wages that they deserve. Thank you. So next up is Rosa Madrigal, and Dominique will translate for her. Buenos días. Mi nombre es Rosa Madrigal y vengo a platicarles un poco de cómo sobrevive uno aquí en San Diego. Uh, hello, my name is Rosa Madrigal and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about how people survive in San Diego. Yo, yo estoy trabajando ahorita en un restaurante. Este, tengo 24 años trabajando ahí, pero a veces no, no trabajo las 40 horas, trabajo 25 horas, 30. Y pues también tengo un trabajo que yo hago por mi cuenta, limpio casas y trabajo en una, también en, en otro lugar de limpieza, que es una compañía y cuando me ocupan me hablan. Tengo tres trabajos para sobrevivir y pues mi casa yo la estoy pagando y este... Uh, I currently work at a restaurant, I've been there for 24 years. I uh, don't always work the full 40 hours. Sometimes I work 25 to 30 hours. I also have a second job cleaning houses on the side. Uh, and then I am also on call for a cleaning company. Whenever they need me, um, I go and I, I, I work for them. So I have three jobs at the moment. Estoy pagando mi casa. Eh, rento parte de mi casa también para poder pagar mis gastos porque los biles del agua, la luz, pago tarjetas del, del banco también porque Cuando no tengo dinero, voy a sacar préstamos electrónicos. Uh, I have to sometimes rent out spaces in my house to make ends meet um, uh, because the bills are so high with rent, with electricity, with water. Um, it, it, it only is helpful for me to rent out rooms. Um, I also have to pay my credit card because a lot of the times I'm short on funds and I have to uh, use my credit card or take out loans. Es muy dura la vida para mí, también tengo a un hijo ahí con los nietos y a otra hija, pues no pueden pagar renta a ellos y ahí los tengo conmigo, les estoy ayudando. I live with my son, um, my daughter and her children, my grandchildren also live with me as well because they can't afford to live on their own, uh, so we all live together and I'm, I'm supporting them. Los costos aquí para vivir en San Diego son muy altos. Para una persona tendría que ser el ingreso como de unos 20 mil en adelante y pues no nos alcanza. Está muy dura la crisis aquí y necesitamos que pues el aumento del salario para que nos beneficiemos un poco de eso. Si pudieran escucharnos y ayudar a la gente que necesita tener más aumento en su salario, se lo agradeceríamos mucho. Gracias. So the cost of living here in San Diego is so high and in order to make it you have to make over 20,000, you know, and up. Um, so, you know, the only solution is, is an increase in salary. So we'd re I'd really appreciate it if we could uh, bring attention to this and bring about this. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, next up is Jeannie Crescenzo. Hi, I'm the executive director of Amicus. We work with homeless veteran women. And we have a house, a tri supposed to be a transitional living house, called Amika's House. And the women that are living there are doing everything that we mapped out for them as a plan. They got jobs. They have, uh, they're taking care of their children. They work overtime whenever they can. And they can barely make it now. 
I would love to see them feed their children healthy food, and instead they have to go get whatever is cheapest. They are only paying $400 a month for a bedroom that they and their children share, and there's no way that they can move beyond this to pay the rents that are here in San Diego. They work very hard, and I think that anyone who works as hard as they do deserves to get enough money that they can live. And our last speaker is Rabbi Lori Koski. Good morning, I'm Lori Koski, Rabbi and Executive Director of the Interfaith Committee for Worker Justice. Since around 1998, the Center on Policy Initiatives has been putting together the facts of what it looks like to live in San Diego. This is an incredible document. It is full of what we need to know to make real change for real people. And that is why while you listen to people speak about the percentages and what people earn here, we remember that it's really about Sandra and Josh and Rosa, real people on the streets of our city working hard every day working full-time to support their families and unable to do so. With information that Center on Policy Initiatives provides for us, we are able to create coalitions to make a change. People of Faith in San Diego will take this document and they will be part of the change, the hope that every family has that life will be better in the near future because good people of faith and conscience cannot live with facts and figures that tell us this story about our city. Thank you for being here, and I believe Crystal will open for questions. Thank you, Rabbi. So just as a reminder, there were many other workers that wanted to join us this morning, but they had to work, uh, which is the proof of our publication. Uh, we will take questions from you now. If anyone has questions, I personally the a question. Preguntas? Let me know. What, this is not a push for men and employees, but most people are making way more than what they want to do than employees do. What is this a push for? What, what is this a push for? And how are you going to do it? Okay. Uh, Peter, would you like to take that question? Um, so, if I understood correctly, the question was uh, that the, the cost of living are much higher than both the current minimum wage and, and even some of the proposals that are out there in terms of raising it, is that correct? Well, most of these people here make more than what the proposed minimum wage increase is. So it's not going to be a push for the minimum wage. It's obviously something more. What is it supposed to accomplish? How do you hope to get that? Well, um, so a couple different things. I mean, so one thing is that at the, I mean, there's a uh, law that's already passed at the state level uh, which will raise the minimum wage to $9 in July of this year and $10 in January of 2014. And as you know, as the gentleman noted, that's not enough, and that's below what these many of these people who are here today earn. Um, and so, one of the things that you know we're calling attention to is that the cost of living here in San Diego is higher than even other areas in California. Um, you know. When he was interim mayor, Todd Gloria raised the issue of a potential for having a citywide minimum wage here in the city of San Diego. Um, there hasn't been, you know, to my knowledge, he hasn't floated a, a particular dollar amount. But we would like to see, um, you know, improvement here in the San in San Diego for a minimum wage that that at least comes much closer than the state level minimum wage um, in meeting the the true cost of living here in the city of San Diego and in the region. Other questions? Right. Um, if you'd like interviews afterwards, please let myself or Susan know, and thank you everyone for being here.